clear cuts, select harvest, burned out areas, anything that creates that regrowth, that thick regrowth, draws deer. That's food, that's cover, that's everything a deer needs. It's a huge draw to whitetails. Clear cuts truly are the cornfields of the Northwoods. You know, a lot of guys think big bucks bed in the middle of these cutovers. And it's, it's kind of uh, well known that logged off areas get good in the next few years. And uh, lots of people will hit those spots. So if they're right alongside of a road, it might not be the greatest spot in the world. You might want to find the ones that are a little more isolated. But even so, um, most people just think the deer are bedded in the middle of this. And to some point they are. But the big bucks are bedded on edges. They're bedded on transitions. They're bedded on the edge of the cutover, the wind to back, looking at the open woods. They're bedded in, if they're bedded in the interior, it's at an interior transition, or like in a marsh, it's at a big lone tree, or a big tree that fell over, or a little high spot, a hump. But not just in the middle of thick. There's a reason they bed in certain spots. They like the thick, they like the feed here, they like the escape cover. So they got good escape, they got food, and they got edge bedding. That's why they're here. They, again, they don't bed in the middle. They do sometimes, but there's got to be a feature there causing that. And usually what the feature would be that would get them into the middle is an elevation change, a little high spot, or uh, a tangle of trees left there, like an island. Um, but generally, the best spots on clear cuts are the downwind sides. Um, because again, they're going to put that thick cover to their back, smell anything from behind them, and watch the open. Um, so that edge of the clear cut is where they're bedding. And that's what gets a lot of guys, because a lot of guys go walking up to that, and you know, that's where all the rubs are and stuff, and they go and they set up. Well, the deer are watching them come. So the eyes are huge. I mean, they're going to see you coming in there to set up. So that's a, a huge obstacle, is how you set up on them. A lot of times I come in down the edges or something, or I stay just over a rise, um, and you get them to come to you. You can't go to them because they're going to see you. They're set up perfect. So if the downwind side is, is, let's say the downwind side of a clear cut is on the south end of a property, wind's coming out of the north, you're going to try to access from the east or the west on the edge. Correct. Because okay. they got you with the wind if you come through the clear cut. They got you with the eyes if you come from downwind got to come from the sides. Now typically how are they traveling that clear cut then when they get up from bedding? Which They're direction? Just going towards food. Okay. I mean sometimes they go into the clear cut and eat and then you got to be you, you know in the clear cut to the sides because a lot of times that's the only food is the clear cut's got all the leaves and stuff so sometimes you got to get into them a little bit. Okay. I think a guy's got to be ready to to shoot and he's got to find a way to get narrow through this stuff. I mean it might look thick but I always seem to find a good opening if I need to, so. Okay. A lot of times, uh, a lot of the big buck travel will be along the edge of a clear cut. And the reason of that is, is it's hard for a buck to walk through that clear cut. And especially when you start getting more into the rut months, which is mostly when people are hunting, they're gonna cruise the downwind side of that clear cut because all the does in there. Right. And the does will bed in there on purpose, and they will bed in the thick stuff where the bucks don't bed because they know that they're safer in there because a buck ain't going to be able to get in there and harass them with their antlers. And the main thing here is that these clear cuts, so if they, if they clear cut something this year, you're talking three, four years down the road, it's going to have a heavy, heavy undergrowth and growing back up. Mm -hmm. And that's when these areas are going to start being used as primary bedding spots for mature bucks. Yep. You know, I've seen them get good a year after they're cut but they get even better as it gets thicker and grows in like a jungle, you know? Yeah. As the saplings really get thick. But you still gotta have trails through for the bucks to get through and stuff too. But. Do you find that, that bucks or deer in general have, have issues, I guess, traveling through a lot of down timber? Or, I mean, I guess it's... They find animals. a way, they yeah. find a way. Yeah. Sometimes that funnels them right to where you need them to go. Right. Because you know, a lot of times in a lot of these logging operations, they just leave the crap lay all over the place, especially on public. Right. Because there's nobody really policing that they clean it up after they're done. 
Yeah. So you have logging roads and access trails that they use for that, so sometimes those provide natural corridors. Sure, but those natural corridors with the logging roads and stuff, you got to remember, they're attracting other hunters too. Right. And so are the clear cuts. I mean, I'm not the only guy that's going to tell you that clear cuts are a great place to hunt. So clear cuts get a lot of attention. And because of that, the best thing you can do is study aerials and find clear cuts that are further back. They're not right next to the road where you can see them. Um, even in today's age of uh, computers and phones, most people that hunt the Northwoods are, are vision oriented, so they don't go look at maps, they don't look it up on their phone, they just walk down a logging road till they find something. Right. Right. If you go to your state's natural resources center and you look up uh, who's in charge of forestry in your county, in a lot of cases uh, they'll have maps available that show where logging has been and where logging is going to be and uh, they're a good resource to talk to to find out where some of those remote areas are and another resource is if you, you get to know some local loggers get to talking with them I mean you see them on the sides of the road while you're out uh, hunting and scouting and stuff stop and talk to them. We found a bedding area that uh, is obviously a buck bedding area, but the beds aren't real, real defined. There's a lot of beds in there, maybe a hundred buck beds, but they're not worn to the ground or not in exact specific positions. But it's a thick, uh, old cut that's grown in, as you can see, and it's got some of the uh, the drop off the hilly where they bed on the ends. But it's also got some thick spots in the middle where they're bedding, and it's not defined. And there's no way to get in here and really pound them inside. But uh, this is really a small area. It might be 75, 100 yards across. So what we did is we found the exit entrance where the bucks are coming in and out, and the beds are only 50, 75 yards away. So we're really not hunting a specific bed, but we're still hunting each one of those beds the way we would if they were individual. Just off a little bit, but we're really hunting a lot of them. So this is where they're going to come out, stage, and then move on. So you see all the rubbing and stuff here on all these trees. and. Yeah, the pine trees hit pretty good. There's a big pine tree hit just over here. So what we did is we found a, a tree here that covers this whole entrance exit. And this is where we're going to uh, set up. The best time to look at a clear cut, to scout it, is in winter, is in spring. Before those leaves come on, when you can look over it, and you can resort back to your what you learned in hill country. Look for a little rise, a hill, a leeward side within the clear cut. Look for a little opening. Look for a lone tree. It's all kind of relative when you go back to like when you were hunting marshes, when you were hunting hill country. Look for the same things inside that clear cut. Look at that clear cut like it's a bowl of cattails, like it's a marsh. Look at it like it's a little, little tiny hilly area that's thick. You got to blend these terrains back into each other. Looking over a clear cut. This is a year old clear cut. So they would have cut this uh, last summer. Oh, it's already growing up pretty quick. And you can see the dogwood everywhere. And that's really good because the deer like dogwood. And as I'm looking, I can actually see that the tops are all bitten off everywhere. And as I was walking in, I, I noticed there was a few few does that I kicked up. And they weren't in the clear cut. They were over here. This is like a point. Some timber that they left. So what the deer do is they... They sit in those pockets, and uh, when it, they they overscan the clear cut like a field, so that's where they'd be bedding. That's where you're gonna find them. Two things. Number one, clear cuts don't have a lot of cover in late season. When there's leaf cover, they have a lot of cover. So bedding is often coming from the outsides in later in the year. Number two, look at those clear cuts in big woods, 
like you look at food plots in farm country. That's a draw. So bucks are going to get close to that food and bed nearby it as long as it's safe to be there. So right now I'm on a transition between the clear cut and that's a year and a half clear cut. And then it transitions into marshy type grass. And along this transition is a nice trail. And then behind the marsh is alders. And that's where you'd find good bedding. It's very thick, it's very wet. And the trail actually runs this way along the alders. So we followed that, we came this way, we came to a scrape right over in here underneath this pine tree and it's basically an intersection of trails and the end of the trail runs all along the transition here and what they can do is they can bed in these alders right here and they're actually not very far from the clear cut so when it's nighttime and they want to feed they come out of the bedding area and they'll come into this clear cut as if it was like a cornfield I want to take you guys along on a hunt that took place about 15 years ago me and my son, the Rat Slayer, uh, got permission to hunt on a property that the year before got select harvested. In select harvesting, they don't remove all the trees, they remove some of them. This particular property had a flat top, a flat bottom, and had a ridge, a steep ridge, running around the logged area. They logged up on the top in a small section that they logged. So they had logged the year before and it had grown back thick and with a lot of um, a lot of small trees and stuff that were acting as food for the deer. There was a couple good points coming off of the bottom of this clear cut that looked really good for bedding and bedding on the wind that we hunted. So we had a just off wind and I took Rat Slayer in there and I set him up in a tree right where all the trails came together where his wind would blow just off to the side. Not long into his sit, a really nice eight pointer came in out of the bedding just down from him and up out of the point. This is a really nice buck, and at that point in time, that would be Rat Slayer's best buck ever, and his only buck with a bow. And it was just coming into range when he saw movement out of the corner of his eyes.
giant came in from the other bedding area. So both bedding areas held good bucks. Then he had to make a decision because he got the eight pointer right underneath him. And he had to decide whether he wanted to shoot the eight pointer or hold out and hope that the giant came closer. Kudos to Rat Slayer. He made the decision I would have made. He let the, the eight pointer that he'd have loved to have had walk and walk past him. And he held out for the giant that never made it over. This video is brought to you by Hunting Beast Gear. Mobile gear for mobile hunters. Made by mobile hunters.